In this video, we're going to look at the differences between analog and digital systems. So we care about digital systems because in the modern era, uh, most systems are moving to digital systems. So this spans everything from computers and smartphones all the way to communications and you know automobile controllers, uh, household appliances, everything you can think of that is based on electronics is gradually moving over into the digital side of things. So what we want to do is we want to start looking at what it is to be a digital system and by doing that we typically start with what is an analog system. So let's take a look at what an analog system is and then we'll kind of uh, compare it to what a digital system is. So let's start by listing out some of the properties of an analog system. So an analog system is a continuous time bearing function of the information it represents. Okay. So continuous means that there are no breaks in the signaling. Okay, so if I'm an analog signal, I, I'm continuous. That means that there's no gap. So for an, an example of a gap would be where I stop here and I move directly down here and I continue going. So that doesn't happen in a, an analog system. Okay, an analog system is continuous. And an analog system is time varying, meaning that once time starts, it doesn't stop. And so you can almost think of analog as the real information or real the real world so just like in the real world when time stops it started some time ago and now it's just progressing forward and it's not stopping regardless of what we do that's kind of the way to think about an analog system once you turn on an analog system it's always operating it's always producing an output based upon some sort of input and the output that it produces is going to be a continuous time varying function of the information so let's take a look at an example of an analog system a classic example of an analog system would be kind of a sound sensor now <clears throat> let's say that we have sound out here and we are going to go through some sort of system that is going to produce an electrical signal okay so over here we'll have an electrical signal and what we're gonna do is this is an analog system which will convert sound into electricity now in digital digital electronics what we care about is we we tend to care about converting you know real world properties or real world characteristics into electrical signals but an analog system doesn't have to always produce an electrical system it can produce any other type of type of output but it's converting between the real world and some information that's directly mapped to what that real world information was so for example let's say we have sound and sound is a, a pressure wave so we have some atmosphere and the atmosphere can move back and forth which is what sound is so if you think about plotting that versus is time so you have this real world time varying piece of information that might go like this well if we went through an analog system and produced an electrical signal that was a representation of that or that represented that information in the electronic world what we'd have is we'd have a direct mapping of that okay so let's say that we converted some sort of pressure over here in an atmosphere into electricity and let's just say we plotted it versus volt plotted it as voltage and both of these systems are going to be time varying meaning that they just time starts and they march along okay then in the real world over here you have sound which is continuous because it's the real world so everything in the real world is continuous it doesn't start and stop with time so so does the analog output so does the electrical signal that is being produced by this analog system so it's not going to jump around and <clears throat> jump around from one spot to the other instantaneously with time, what it's going to do is it's going to continuously track what this real world information was. So that's kind of just the general overview of what an analog signal and an analog system is. Now the mapping of it doesn't have to be directly you know a one-to-one -one mapping. It could be maybe the inverse or maybe some some other function that the some different type of function where the output of the analog system you know didn't match the wave shape of the incoming system or the incoming signal but that's okay it's still a continuous time bearing function now let's take a look at what a digital signal or a digital system might look like so a digital system in contrast is not continuous it is a discrete system 
Okay, so what discrete means is that instead of being continuous with time like in an analog system, what it does is discrete means that you take the information and you chop it up into pieces. Okay, and then you look at these pieces, and these pieces can be recorded as some type of information, and then we can use them later to reconstruct the original signal. Now, this has an advantage. Uh, in that <clears throat> you don't necessarily need to build something that continuously tracks what's going on with the real world or, or the information coming in. You can just observe it at moments in time. But it's discrete in nature, so digital discrete in nature, meaning that you look at or you produce information in these little discrete blocks. Now, in reality, or in theory, these are discrete, okay, they're not continuous. So you take this piece of information here, take this piece of information here, and so with respect to time, there really was kind of a gap in time that existed, so that's why we're able to say that this is discrete. <clears throat> okay, another thing about a digital system is that it is a representation, okay, so it is not the actual information, it's not a direct mapping to the original information, it is a representation, or said another way, the original information is encoded. Now, encoding it is just a technique to convert real information from the real world into a system. Okay, so we'll call this f of d. And it's going to produce a discrete representation of what the real world information was. So if we took our example again where we took a sound over here, we took some sound, and over here we had an analog system which produced a continuous time-varying function that represented the sound. In a digital system, what we would do is we'd produce a discrete encoded representation of that sound. So for example, maybe we wanted to come along and we just wanted to look every once in a while at a rate that looked similar to that. And what we'd do is we'd grab information here, grab information here, grab information here, and grab information here. And we'd come over here and what the output might look like is information that was discrete, meaning that it was not continuous, but it was encoded in such a way that we just had these points that were produced. Now if we came back and we looked at the points, we could reconstruct that by kind of drawing a line through it, and we could figure out what the original information was supposed to be, but we didn't have a direct continuous mapping like we did in an analog system. So the key with a digital is that it's re it's a representation and it's an encoding technique. Now, when you say you're going to encode something, you can encode it in a, in a variety of different ways. A, r uh, a classic example of a digital system would be Morse code. So in Morse code, you represent you know numbers and characters, alphabetic characters, with dashes and dots. So for example, in a Morse code, the letter A is represented by a dot followed by a dash. Okay. Now that dot and the dash, you can you could say that to somebody. You could just say dot dash. You could represent the dot and the dash by an electrical signal. You could represent the dot and the dash by an optical signal. But it doesn't really matter because the information that's that's being received, in no matter what form it comes, if somebody sees a dot and a dash, they know that they were tr that the original person was transmitting the letter A. So you can see in this way that we could take information, so the information in this case is the letter A, we encoded it into something that was discrete, and then we transmitted that to somebody, and somebody in a, a variety of different ways we could have done it, and then that information was then decoded on the receiver, and the original piece of information was retrieved. So we did it in a much different way than if we had taken an analog signal, and we had taken A, and we ran it down, let's say, a long wire, or we transmitted it some way like that, and the information was then received, and you got the same information, but it was a continuous function so that this A had to exist at the same time that it was being received. You can see an advantage of this, because in a digital system, you could take the, the code, and you could actually store it, and then come back later, and then you would be able to decode it and figure out the exact information. So that's the main difference between an analog and a digital system. <clears throat> and if you look at signals, one of the ways, one of the most common ways that we represent digital information is by using what we call a square wave. So for example, let's take a look at let's take a look at what a signal might look like. So if I had an analog signal, you know, over here we have an analog signal. <clears throat> we just have this continuous time-varying signal that represents some information. If we come over and we look at a digital signal, 
then what we would have here is we'd have this representation. But if you look at what it looks like when you when you encode this and transmit it in, in electricity, uh, we typically use the two electrical quantities that we have, which are current and voltage. So we could, let's just say, for example, we represented this as voltage with respect to T, and we wanted to look at what the the electrical signal actually looked like when it's transmitting digital information. Well, the most common way to do it is what we, with what we call a binary system. And in a binary system, you have two values that you are used that you are using to encode the information. So, for example, let's just say we had some system that looked like a square wave right here. What we could do is we could define a region that represented the threshold or a crossing switching threshold where when the signal was below this threshold it was considered a zero and when it was above this it was considered a one. So in this way you can see at the simplest form we could use electricity by defining the switching threshold and we could actually transmit codes using a, a, an electrical voltage. And all we had to do was say, okay, when you get to the receiver, what's going to happen is that this receiver will determine whether the signal was above or below a specific threshold, and it will then produce the actual result that it was trying to get. So that's an example of digital signaling. Okay, so let's end there, and then we'll look at some advantages and disadvantages of this in the next video.